Yeah, do it like that, nigga. Yeah, man, nigga always <laughs> cracking jokes, doing some dumb shit, just loud and it's crazy. Yeah, man. <laughs> hey, that's how you that's how you get the hoes, man. You gotta make them laugh. <laughs> I I'm, I'm gonna keep it real. Me and Buddy didn't have no classes or nothing like that. We met each other just in the streets in Inglewood in that little section. No shit. He That's probably right. started bagging on me or something, and I said something back to him. So, like, right, right. it wasn't never no formal introduction. It just in passing in the hood. Mama, mama. Niggas in the back smoking Alibaba, and he can hardly talk. But naked with a red flag, doing the blood walk. It's the return of the forty. We was young homies, like we we wasn't faking. This wasn't no just no rap shit, like you know what I mean. And I right. seen how he was with everybody, you know what I'm saying. And then it's like it wasn't disappointing for us because it's like we on the label and we looking like okay, Nate Dog ain't even put his album out yet. Quick, right. ain't put his album out yet. At right. the, time, the dog pound is just now finna drop their album, so it's like we got to be way in the back, time, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like the way they was putting out records at the time, it wasn't like how. See, Master P went, he did what Suge was supposed to do. Like Suge was concentrating on everything that was hot at the time and maximizing off of that. If it was Dr. Drake, it was Dr. Drake. When Snoop Dogg was Snoop Dogg. Then when Pac came home, he, that was everything. You know yeah. I mean? You know, dude come home and do a double album, you know what I'm saying? And that motherfucker selling so much, you know, they focus on Pac. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. he didn't have, I don't think he had the people and the nobody really in his ear to tell him, like, look, you need to spread all this out, man. You got all these artists. Just imagine. Right. If you drop a project or at least a single on mm -hmm. all of them, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, you know, I, whatever he was doing, man, it was worth like 500 tickets at the time and had the biggest record label in history in uh, hip hop. Right. So, shit, he felt like it wasn't broke. He wasn't trying to fix it. That 250000 he gave you, that was just a tax write off. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> Yeah. Like what year? What year was that big? Why can you recall what year that was? He gave y'all that thirty, man. Uh, all of that was like ninety, ninety five. Ninety five. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. Like you gave us like thirty. Oh, it was maybe fifteen. It was between anywhere between fifteen and thirty bands. I know it was something like that. Right. You know, whatever it was, it felt like a whole lot at the time. Hell yeah, 95. <laughs> <laughs> 94, 95. I, I know a motherfucker, yeah. not a, a, a motherfucker, whole head off his shoulder for that. Yeah. Oh, it, was, yeah. it, was, it was love because we had already, you know, pressed up on the, uh, the other label that we was with, we went to the top. We went over the dude head that we were signed to, to the distributor. And mm. like, look, man, we are here, you know what I'm saying? We, we, you know, we got our faces out here. We the main niggas that's doing all the interviews, this, that, and third. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? We need some cars. We ain't got no whips or nothing. Like, right. you know what I mean? And he was like, oh, what y'all need? We're like, man, we on our way. Because I'll never forget, I had got I got a newspaper. You know how to give you them sales papers in the mail? Right, right. <laughs> Open Ford had deals on brand new Explorers. Man, me and Stress beelined up to that motherfucker record label, got that bag. Man, they like, look, we need y'all need some people to co-sign this, that, and the third. Man, I grab, I drug my grandma down to Galpin for it. He went and got his mama. Tell him, look, here, sign these. All right, y'all can leave. Just leave us. We we'll see y'all later. Right. Man, we put them joints matching Eddie Bowers off the showroom floor. That's you know right. what I mean? So we got right. to, bro, we already had brand new whips. That shit was another day too. I was pumped. I couldn't wait to get to the hood. My right. fat ass, I had my shirt off with a red flag around my neck. <laughs> <laughs> Ignorance oh, of <laughs> Hey, so, so none of the, so none of y'all stuff on on Death Row never got dropped. No, it never, it never no. got. No, it's a lot of people stuff that never came out. You got to think, Nate Dog never put a record out. A lot of them never got no records. 
once it's once it got bad, it got ugly, bro. Like you gotta think when Pop got killed, yeah, it was all downhill from there. Cause then Shug got a nine piece after that, and that was it. Yeah, yeah. man. Once he went to jail, you know they were still trying to keep it going, but Death Row wasn't making no noise. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't what it was. It was off. Yeah, I see. So uh, it's saying '98. That's when Young Soldiers was dismantled, and they departed from Death Row Records. No. So then after that, then after that, that's when the the relatives came about. Yeah, and like like we yeah we just yeah we we went our separate ways as far as the Young Soldiers. We just kind of grew apart, you know what I'm saying? We was older mm-hmm. and this stuff, you know what I'm saying? You know, me and Booger's cousins, so you know we didn't get there every day anyway. Right. So right. You know, in 98, you know what I'm saying? We drive down the street and dog like, you know, man, we should come up with our own name, man. Just me and you. And I'm like, shit, I don't know, whatever. What we gonna do? And I'll never forget we was driving down Prairie, right when we, as soon as we like right when we passed Century, he because he was on the way, he was saying gang related, gang this and gang just saying shit, you know what I mean? And he was saying trying to mix stuff with us but being related. Then that nigga was like relatives. And he that nigga looked at me, I'm like, yeah, what's the act? And we was yeah. fucking here, you know, man. By the time we got to 111, we was relatives. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's right, that's right. That's a hard name, though. You yeah. Know, that's a hard name. Because it was like, that- you got to think, like, culture wise, street wise, that's when. We really starting as B dogs. We start rep. We was we wasn't saying cousins no more. Right, we was right. Representing, our, referencing ourselves that oh, that's my relative. That's my yep. rel-, you know what I'm saying. So yeah, that's what made the name click even harder at the time because that was still, you know, you know, we went through different cultural phases and, you know, back then that's just like buddy name buddy loco, but yeah, niggas don't put loco on their name no more. You know what right. I'm saying? Like right. you got to be a a, a staple nigga that been around for a while to be certain names, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. You, know, you know, so that was part of that. You know, it worked out, though. Hey, I remember the first time I really looked at Booger like, this nigga really made it, man. That nigga pulled up on the 108 one time in a drop top, and he had his shirt off. And I said, hey, Booger, man, where you going? That nigga said, I'm about to charter a boat for my birthday, and we going to Catalina. I said, hey, I really, like, to me, like, nigga, you made it. You know what I mean? Like, from a, from a motherfucker that's not going out of the hood. Yeah. Huh? Man. For his birthday party that year. Yeah, yeah. He was like, he's going to charter a boat, and we going to Catalina. For a nigga that don't be coming up out of the hood, that don't go past Yukon or fucking Prairie, a motherfucker said he going to Catalina. Like, nigga. You big time, nigga. I was like, damn. You know what's the crazy part? Because, like I said, like us being on death row and doing different things with them gave us the opportunity to cross worship and live yeah. a different type of lifestyle around different type of people and learn different stuff. And to see know, other shit. Yeah, right. and learn that we could be doing other stuff even with the little money we making in the hood. That's right. Crazy. Like you wouldn't think, like I got nigga. I mean, you know, niggas in the hood, we got thousands of dollars. Niggas is serving work. We got money. We ain't broke, but you, right. we constantly doing the same thing. Twelve khaki suits and Chucks and Cortez and shit like that. I get with Shug, and I'm now I'm wearing Havana Joes and you know these different Good types shit. of shirts. And damn, Escape Cologne. This is smell bomb. How much? What? It's just yeah. a whole another world, like, you know, I'm just like, and at that time, Booger was transitioning more, really on his pimping, too. So, yeah. he around fly niggas all day and night, and his whole, you know, mentality is changing, like, I, you got, you know what I'm saying, in order to attract it, you gotta look it. So, that's why, if you notice, book people always want like, man, Booger, you know, he flamboyant like shit. His whole motto always been, in order to get it, you got to look like it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's why he did stuff like that. Like He would gamble with that type of shit, too. 
that both wasn't no punk written that motherfucker either. Right. right. He charged. He was always, he was always one of them young fly niggas, man. Yeah, that's all, man. You got like, he come from that though. His dad, my uncle, you know what I'm saying? Like, there used to be a club on Western called the Wands. Mm -hmm. The Hunters. Yes. Yeah. Between 104th and 108th by the Hilltop Market called the Wands. That club was named after Dog. That dog name. Mm. His, oh. dad, that club. His daddy was a real hustler. Like, that nigga Godfather name is Dapper Dan the Candy Man. So we come from that. Mm -hmm. when we was young, niggas Seville's outside, niggas in three piece suits, and you know what I'm saying. Like if you look at the movie JoJo Dancer, there's a couple of niggas that's dog uncles on his daddy's side that's in that movie. You know what I'm okay. saying? You know, like so he come from that lifestyle. Like when we was little, nigga, book of them stayed in a big that it was a big ass house, like on on Fourth Ave, Third Ave, and the avenues, like huge house. So. From that, so he he always held on to that. Like, I'm gonna always give me some money, man. And you know, he always right. had his dream of owning his own business. That's why you see what he got going on now. That's always been his passion, even more than music. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. That's right. And that's good too, man. Because you tell that big nigga love to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to go check that out, buddy. One time down there. But all the music we really did, he became a millionaire. I was selling chicken and gravy, huh? <laughs> all, all, all some motherfucking food. <laughs> Kool Aid and shit. Yeah, nigga, got to check that out when you go down there, buddy. Got to check out sugar shit. Oh yeah. Hey, man, hey, so, so, my boy Rat say where you was at, Rat in uh, where? Missouri, Oklahoma. When you got your when you got your first your first relative CD in Missouri and St. Louis, yeah, in St. He Louis, said you know, they I always got, wherever I go, wherever I stay, if, uh, be I'm a bump from Inglewood shit. Period. You know what I'm saying? So you know, motherfuckers was on it when I was bumping it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, he was, he was on it. Yeah, we was heavy in St. Louis because our you know you know we got an extension of us the mafias in St. Louis. Right. Yeah. You know, you know Tonto and Rock. Them niggas yeah, from St. Yeah. Louis. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. The music was definitely out there. That was mm -hmm. one of our spots where we sold a lot of records. At. Hell yeah! So I'm I'm, I'm reading off I'm reading off this uh, script that I got. I didn't know that that y'all was connected with Mitchy Slick back in back in '89. Nah, we met. We nah, we weren't connected with Slick that way back then. Not in '89. We met Slick around like '99. What? what? Like that, what's up with that man? Huh. Like that, come on now. I don't want anybody. This for all my niggas, homie. I deal about me. I don't have nothing to hide. I want the world to be. I'm a six gangster. one hard top, six two red. She don't bugger cause he gon' say. I'm a baller, bitch. Baller, bitch. Three, four, five days, still ain't called the bitch. I'm the hardest in the cat. I got the big homies with me, and they ready to bang. Red scratchings, all in the chucks. Big booty rats, all in the trucks. Got back to the chucks, the gangster high tops, shell toes, K Swiss classic Reeboks, corduroy house shoes and Romeos, aluminum caprices, El Caminos, and niggas get chipped like casinos. Hood dice game on my knees shooting beanos. Go serve you a smoker. Your baby mama keep calling me, so I broke my left the bitch at the room, boom. went foul, boom, got the baller so hard, I threw a thesin out the moon. <laughs> Relatives be the realest in the game, big wide sugar boogers still remain, the hardest single wood rappers in the game, and so you know money boys is All the game. Red and Holla. ooh, money boys is the game. So We get money, now things starting to change. I'm just taking time to holler at your brains. We was young, all we wanted was the world. I was Tony Montana, you was the hardest with the girl. I hope you're watching, cause I'm doing my thing. And the world gon' remember your name. And I was put on this earth to be the truth And show the world first that Bentley make a coup Enterprising in a higher tax bracket And what I don't got breeze and booger match it All these rappers with their rap tactics Learn publishing, learn your mathematics So why you broke and waiting to get shot I'ma be the first millionaire from the block Say what, say what, say what 
in a 600 waving a flag out the top. Relatives be the realest in the game. Big wide sugar boogers still remain. The hardest single wood rappers in the game. And so you know, money boys is All the game. Red and Holla. Ooh, money boys is the game. Ooh.